For my next adventure, I would head back to Baritz in the south of France for the annual Wheels and Waves event. This year they added a new race to their list of antics, called the Swank Rally. An enduro type discipline on vintage or run what you run motorcycles and held in the beautiful Basque countryside. It was basically a gentleman's race through the woods and trails, but heavy rains just before race day made the track even more interesting, as it turned most of the course into a thick quagmire of muddy sludge for most of the lap. As always, the organisers welcomed the riders and then went on to discuss the rules. We were basically told how to time ourselves and then go and have some fun. adventure road bike and I'd be sharing it with an experienced and fast French journalist called Elaine Campbell. Elaine will go first and set the time, but by the looks of Elaine's riding, he's going to take some beating. Another one would blast off to chase the clock, some making better starts than others. Now it was my turn. Time to gear up, jump on the Royal Enfield, and get to the star line. The uphill start and around the top of the course was all dry. But then as we dropped into the trees, it was just a big sloppy mess. Nothing else to do than try and pick some kind of line and then gas it. It was an exhausting lap as you were just fighting to stay in control of the bike the whole time. The mud bath just sent the machine into all kinds of different directions and I felt like I was going to crash at any time. without dropping the machine and we both made it to the end in one piece just the track is so messed up that was a lot of fun after the race Elaine and I shared stories from our eventful lap and even after all we rode through and nearly seven minutes of racing we ended up only seconds apart the Royal Enfield did really well in those sketchy conditions, especially for a road bike, but the silencer didn't fare as well, getting
getting a beating in those deep ruts and getting ripped off somewhere on the lap. The Swank Rally have been a great success and good times had by all. Now let's put my time on that leaderboard and then make my way down to the art ride. Now the art ride is just a great collection of motorcycles and motorcycle inspired artwork and photography. If you like motorbikes, it's just a place to come and stare at the stuff and be inspired. Some bikes are of course just for show, but others will be competing in events over the weekend, which is great as you also get a chance to see and hear them blast around in either the remaining sprint or flat track races. The next event was Pumps Peak, a sprint race with a light hearted twist and held on a picturesque mountain road above San Sebastian. There are loads of categories, so it doesn't really matter what you ride, as long as you twist that throttle and get your head down. on the helmet and then when that gun is fired he's pulling that clutch bang it into gear and then go up the hill to the finish line as fast as you can this year i didn't compete in the sprint race but i did get a chance to test out the new custom royal enfield drag bike named rockstock it's a serious piece of kit with many trick parts and certainly looks and sounds the business. And I was thankful to take her for a quick blast. The head to head battles continued all afternoon as riders competed for top honours, keeping the fans entertained until the end of the day. Next up was the Vendor Village, where motorcycle companies show off their products and a very special guest over at Alpine Stars was none other than X250 and 500 world champion, Fast Freddy Spencer. Now, Freddy was a childhood hero of mine and I even got his autograph when I was a small kid, so it was a total honour to finally meet him and talk motorbikes. Also on the stand was an Alpine Stars tailor making a Tech Air Oscar jacket, which once complete, Freddy tried on for size. Other companies went for different ways to show off their products, all with style and plenty of passion. Outside of the village was a cool trial section where riders rode old vintage machines over large obstacles. Impressive on such old heavy bikes with little suspension. Also outside was the ever popular skate ramp. But if that's not your thing, then be amazed at the wall of death. 
something you have to see to really believe. Especially when the rider's doing it on an ancient old machine that had the throttle on the left. Nothing seemed to phase this guy, not even riding with no hands, or even side saddle. Totally crazy and amazing. It's a super fun event and the mini bike race was nothing but pure entertainment. As went on and kept the crowd on their toes, I was looking forward to lunchtime. No, it wasn't because I found someone flipping burgers. It was because during the lunch break, I got the chance to write something really special. So it's not every day that you get to ride a factory bike, but that's exactly what we're going to do today, because I'm going to ride the FTR 750 Factory Indian Flat Tracker. How lucky am I? Look at this thing. Amazing. FTR 750 Factory Indian Scout was absolutely brilliant. Fast, smooth and handled like a dream. And I couldn't wipe that huge smile off my face for the rest of the day. That was really amazing. After the lunch break it was back to business as racers pushed their bikes and themselves to the limit as they kicked up that dust in the pursuit of victory. Podium celebrations brought an end to another great Wheels and Waves event. A brilliant time was had by all, and we look forward to seeing you all there next year. I'm so unfit. <laughs> Bloody English, eh? I'll have to speak to my agent. I don't like Jamie. He's a you're dead if you go in there, Jim. You're gonna win? No! <laughs> I'm Alessandro Giuzio and uh, today I can't ride. <laughs> I can be very, very wet today. <laughs>